Thanks for tuning into the Murphology Podcast. I'm your host, Kathy, aka Murph, and I'm here to give tips and information about group bicycling and bicycle touring with a focus on the Midwest, and hopefully provide some entertainment for you as well. Well, 17 years ago this week, the Corvair Biking Society was founded. As founder Duffy Schomberger describes it, it's a social club on wheels. I was lucky enough to visit the home of Duffy and Belva recently and saw firsthand some of the memorabilia connected to the Corvair Biking Society. One of the members, Bob Bunce, was there and talked to me for a few minutes about cycling. And then Duffy and I got into just what the Corvairs are all about. I want to say congrats to this group for their 17 years of miles of fun and of friendship. And I'm thankful for the time I got to spend with them. So let's take a listen. Well, with me right now is Bob Bunce. Hey, Bob. Hi, Kathy. Well, I wanted to get you on the show. Uh, We're here at Duffy Schomburger's house, and you just happened to be here. So guess what? You're now on the show. Well, that's interesting. I know, yeah. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. Well, uh, the podcast that I do is all about uh, bicycling and group bicycling. So I thought maybe, I know that you like to bicycle. I do. Well, I thought maybe I'd ask you a few questions like, how did you get into bicycling? Well, as a child, I bicycled. And then... uh, Probably somewhere in my early teens, I, I moved on from biking. I didn't bike at all. Uh-huh. And uh, I happened to be one of those individuals who had an early heart situation when I was uh, probably about 44 years old. Oh, okay. And after that, I, I was taken care of nicely, and I feel very good about that. And uh, uh, after that, I made a decision to start riding my bike. Sure. Or get a bike, actually. Mm-hmm. I didn't have one at that time. And to start riding on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. And so that really was my uh, inspiration. And I've been doing it ever since. Wow, that's awesome. And any heart problems since? Uh, uh, yes, fortunately, uh, things that can be taken care of. So Perfect. I feel really good about that. Perfect. I'm going to assume, uh, well, my next question is, what is it about cycling that you enjoy? And I'm going to guess a tiny bit of it is fitness related because of the story you just told. Right. But what is it that you enjoy about bicycling? Well, actually, I enjoy a number of things about bicycling. Um, The first thing that comes to mind for me when I get out on a bike, and uh, whether I'm with other folks or uh, particularly if it's just my wife and I, and she's into bicycling as well, which has been great, I kind of get in the zone, I call it, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's just like I can be riding and like all of the stuff in my life just kind of evaporates. Oh, isn't that the truth? You know, I can, I can, I don't look around a lot because I do pay attention to where I'm going and what I'm, I've learned to pay attention to the roadway sure. or whatever I'm riding on <laughs> because there are things that can happen not always good if you hit a rut or something. So yeah. uh, being in that zone is just really calming and uh, uh, relaxing. Well, I do like riding with groups, mm-hmm. and uh, I've done ragbri a number of times. Mm-hmm. I haven't done it for probably about five or six years now. Mm-hmm. I think the group rides are more social. Yes. You know, it's it's about social. It's not about how far or how fast. Actually, it's never been about how fast. Sometimes it's been about how far. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But uh, being part of the Corvairs, which I know you're going to be talking with Duffy about yeah. it, it's... Um, the Corvairs give me an opportunity to socialize with other people who really enjoy bicycling as well. And here again, we've had an opportunity over a few years to get involved in that and uh, found it to be very enjoyable. Great group of people. Awesome. So what is your take on the Corvair Bicycling Society? Is it just a group of people that loves to bike or is it just a group of people that loves to socialize and they bike on the side? All of the above. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, you can decide which is first. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. I think to some people, with some folks, I think it probably starts out as the, the love of bicycling, but I think uh, becoming part of the group yeah. and uh, socializing uh, and getting support. Uh, late last summer, I was riding with the Corvairs over in Madison, Wisconsin, and I needed to, I had a little medical issue that had to be taken care of, and some of the members took care of our bikes, put them up. Uh, brought them back to Cedar Rapids, you know, so it was like people, you know, really cared, stepped in and oh, definitely. Uh, took care of things that I couldn't take care of right at that moment. So, well, any advice you would give to somebody who maybe is saying, I can't, I can't bicycle. The only advice I would say is give it a try. Mm-hmm. Uh, some folks I know who have given it a try just aren't too impressed. They don't seem to get hooked into it. 
Uh, others, for example, we have some friends, my wife and I have uh, some friends, another couple who haven't ridden since they were children, and they're in their early 70s. They bought some e-bikes this summer oh, and sure. have been biking. We went up to Door County uh, with them, biked for, we were up there a week together, and uh, uh, we did a lot of bicycling, and uh, they really enjoyed it. Some folks just don't get into it. Other people, sure. like myself, get a little crazy about it. <laughs> In a good way. Uh, it, well, it is, it's for me, it is. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yes. yeah. Well, that's why we're sitting here, because we, <laughs> we kind of have that need for to talk about bicycling and to live bicycling. And right. It, you mentioned e-bikes, and I'm so thankful that e-bikes were invented. You know, when I first heard about a bike that, you know, could be self-propelled, I'm like, that's crazy. That's cheating. And now, every time I hear somebody talk about an e-bike, it's a success story. It's either somebody who uh, was on the couch to somebody who bikes hundreds of miles a month even. Right. I'm just so thankful that e-bikes are invented. Me too. Actually, uh, I've had, uh, as I've aged and I'm, I'm aging uh, kind of in place, I've had some issues with my hips and my mm-hmm. knees. And, and uh, about two years ago, I had a major issue with my hip, had, it repla- had to have it replaced. Oh. But before having it replaced, I'm now semi- semi-bionic. Uh, I was not writing very much mm-hmm. because it was not pleasant. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I decided to, to uh, try an e-bike out. Uh, I talked to Northtown Schwinn and, or North, Northtown Cyclery. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's an old thought about Northtown Schwinn. Uh, uh, Derek Stepanik and uh, we did some e-bike riding and uh, I ended up buying one. And oh, then yeah. last summer, my wife bought one. And we've done a lot of bicycling. We've bicycled in Europe. We've mm-hmm. bicycled uh, around the country in various places. But now I feel like uh, even with some aging issues coming up, I can bike now until I can't move. Yeah, yeah, I agree. That's Just, a, it's I got to make sure I got that battery charged up. That's, <laughs> <laughs> right, right, yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, I think bicycling is a sport that it will end when your life ends. Like you can bike up until... I, I, well, that's kind of my intention. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, good. Well, Bob, thanks so much for being on the show. Uh, I know that you're kind of coerced into sitting here at the microphone, but. <laughs> uh, no, it's been and fine. And I just want to plug in, put a plug in for this, uh, this young man you're going to be talking yeah, to. Yeah, let's hear Duffy it. Duffy Schamberger. Okay. And, and Duffy has done an amazing job of pulling the script together and keeping it going. And I'll tell you, I, I, I just admire that. So Awesome. I can't wait to talk to him. Thanks, Bob. Well, with me is Duffy Schamberger. Hey, Duffy. Good morning to you. Hello, hello. So Duffy founded, I think with one other guy, the Corvair Biking Society. And so I wanted him to come on the show and tell us a little bit about that. So hopefully you've got all kinds of good stories for us. I've got a few. Probably. Okay, yeah, sure. Good. <laughs> well, let's start off by how did you get into bicycling as an adult? I retired April 15th in 2002 and with a same time, my friend, uh, Dr. John Purdy, retired. Mm-hmm. And so we looked at each other and said, well, what are we going to do now? <laughs> he said, well, let's get some bikes and uh, let's start out and let's go to all the small towns around. We'll go to Lisbon, Mount Vernon, Alvernet, and we'll look for the worst restaurant we can find. The worst restaurant. The worst restaurant. <laughs> okay. So we'd go to this little town and then we'd ask where the restaurants were. And they'd say, well, you got to go to Gwyn's or you got to go to yeah. one or another. Yeah. And we'd go and it was always fabulous. So... <laughs> so <laughs> That quest didn't work, but nevertheless, we, we got out biking. That's how we started. Yeah, yeah. Well, what would you say, what is it about cycling that you enjoy? Is it the fitness, the fun, the sightseeing? I, I enjoy it all. The most important part of this now is the sociability, because now we have a group of friends that all love to have uh, physical fitness. They, mm-hmm. they like to do things. Uh, they, they like to support one another. And uh, so our rides are are always very rewarding. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, let's get into that. So you uh, and your buddy, Dr. Purdy, Mm -hmm. founded the Corvair Biking Society. Um, And I'm really excited for you to talk about, you know, the history of it, maybe um, for sure the meaning of Corvair, because it just cracks me up. But uh, so get into that a little bit. Well, we were meeting uh, one day and and, uh, there's just a couple of us. And we said, well, we need a name for this group. Mm -hmm. And um, so someone suggested, well, how about the Corvairs? Because you could be unsafe at any speed. <laughs> and for, sure enough, we fell down the parking lot. <laughs> Forgot to unclip. <laughs> so the Corvair is an actual car that, does it still exist? It does not. Uh, 
Ralph Nader put it out of business. But, okay. <laughs> but, but he uh, coined the thing unsafe and speed for the Chevy Corvairs. And so that's, uh, that's what we are, unsafe and speed. So when you look at the history, did it start back in 2002? It, it did. It just started with uh, John and I, and then all of a sudden a couple of the guys were, were writing t- together. So we said, well, let's join. So the two became four, then pretty soon four became six, and now it's, uh, it's 50. Oh, 50. So, wow. And, and we limited it 50. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a big group. Sure. And are you mostly uh, located in Iowa? Uh, no, we have a chapter. Uh, it's very similar to the Cedar Rapids chapter in Scottsdale, Arizona. Okay. And that group is also 50. And there we ride uh, three times a week. Okay. Uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, 9 o'clock in the morning. We're done by usually noon or, or 1 for sure. Uh, it's, it's different there. Uh, they probably ride a little farther and a little faster, but we have a lot better trails than we do here. That's the one f- unfortunate thing about Cedar Rapids. And what role do you play in the society? Well, I don't know what you'd call me. Uh, mucky muck, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, uh, I guess I kind of... We, we've got a wonderful group of people, and they'll contribute, and they'll, they'll, they'll come up with whatever needs to be done. We have one gentleman named Bob Baran, who we kind of call him the secretary, but he will uh, email everything that's going on to us, and everybody reads the emails. We publish a list of uh, trails that we're going to do uh, mm. every year, and where we're going to meet and what time. And then, but we get together and we decide what trails are good, what we want to add, uh, what overnights we want to have, what day trips we want to have. And so it's it's everybody's group, so everybody contributes. So that's the neat part about it. Yeah, and you started to touch on it, but give us some examples of places you go. Well, uh, this year we went to um, uh, Minneapolis, uh, which was wonderful. The trails there are fabulous. But the interesting thing about that is there are about six Corvairs from Minneapolis that go oh. to Scottsdale. So, so they're our host, and they know the trails. Sure. They know all the happy hours. They know the good, <laughs> the good bars, all the artwork, uh, everything that's going on. So we rode on uh, Wednesday afternoon, all day Thursday, and Friday morning. So it, it's just a neat deal. And I've heard, I haven't actually cycled in Minneapolis, but I've heard that their trail system is top-notch. It is awesome, just awesome. It goes around the lakes and through the historic district, and uh, it's fabulous. Well, when you talk about the Corvair Biking Society, obviously it's a group of people that bike together, um, and this podcast is a lot about group bicycling sure. and um, what it means to people. Yeah. So when you look at group bicycling, what does it mean to you? Well, I just, I love it. I don't want to miss it. I, I try yeah. never, never to miss a ride. I'll tell you an interesting thing I did not see coming, but uh, we have had uh, uh, over the years, uh, and we're all older, you know, 60 to 70, we even have some 80 year olds, but we, a couple of the gals have lost their husbands and mm-hmm. they will say, you don't know how important the, the biking society is oh, to sure. us. They're our support. Uh, we love the sociability. We love to get and ride. And uh, it's so important to us. So uh, that's something I didn't see coming, but it's Mm -hmm. a side benefit. And I have a a bicycle club here in Cedar Rapids, too, where it's the same sort of thing where people can't wait for the next week. You know, whether it's the social side or the actual miles that they put on their bike, it's they need that. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. 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 Well, when you look at the physical act of group riding, how would you describe the communication? Like, how do you make sure that people are moving at the same pace as the rest of the group. Okay, that we uh, choose a leader every time that we get together. Mm-hmm. And, and it depends on where we're going, but we know someone that may, may know how to get to the Indian Creek Nature Center, mm-hmm. for an example. We go there this afternoon, as a matter of fact. And so uh, then we suggest that they be the leader, and they, they always accept. Nobody ever says, I, know, <laughs> I can't do that. And then we ask that they, they follow them, they be predictable, mm-hmm. uh, don't go in off to cross the street or do a side street or something. So we stay in a, a straight line. Uh, of course, everybody likes to visit. So if you're mm-hmm. on a trail or a road or something that has no traffic or no oncoming traffic, then we visit on the uh, uh, on the on the ride. But mm-hmm. oftentimes it's just a straight line, and then we'll get to a destination. It may be the ice cream shop in Ely. We'll, mm-hmm. we'll stop and have a dish of ice cream, and then everybody gets a chance to visit. Then. We go back to um, the Chrome Horse, and they make us drink beer there. <laughs> so, so, well, you have to reward yourself somehow. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> so we comply with their wishes. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, does your group also do overnight rides? We Well, we have had a night ride uh, 
up the Indian Creek Nature Trail to mm. uh, uh, Center Point, and that's been fun. Mm-hmm. And we get good participation in that, but you've got to have a good moonlit night, and you've got yes. to have a good leader, and yes. we do have a good leader. So, yeah, we do that, sure. And then when you do, um, like you mentioned, Minneapolis, I'm going to guess that you guys do not camp. You probably are <laughs> hotels or... We do not. We, we look for a hotel that's convenient to the trails. Mm-hmm. We look for one that will offer us bicycle storage. Sure. And so we're, we're fortunate enough to tell them, hey, we've got uh, 25 or 30 bicycles. Mm-hmm. We need a place to put them overnight. And they will generally give us a meeting room or a ballroom or a, or a suitcase room or something. So sure. that's important to us. Sure. sure. Well, when you look at your actual bicycle, um, do you carry any luxury items that you have to have on every ride, whether it's a sneaky chocolate bar in the corner or a, I don't know, a book or a chair. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, we have provided to the Corbett Biking Society a uh, lanyard that goes around their neck. Oh, okay. And in that lanyard is a, a small safety kit Okay. that has uh, some salve and some um, Band-Aids and things like that. Uh, interesting enough, I have a whistle. A whistle, and, okay. And we use the whistle to signal it's time to start or if we have someone that's falling behind, or we have a flat tire, or we have something, then we, we blow the whistle, and then the leader knows that three long whistles means stop. Okay, great. So that's yeah. what, that, it may annoy some people, but it, it, I kind of feel like it's a necessary thing to have. So. Sure, and if your, your group is big enough, the leader may not know how far back. That's exactly right, yes. Mm-hmm. Cabooses, or whatever you <laughs> want to call right. it. <laughs> yeah. Any do's or don'ts when group riding that you can think of? Like, I love your comment about being predictable. It's so important on a bicycle. But any do's or don'ts? Oh, yeah. Uh, keep your eye on the road. Keep your head up. Be sure that you're, before you uh, leave, you know, make sure your your tires are properly inflated because mm-hmm. uh, it's hard to control a bike with a low tire. Uh, be sure your brakes work, your chain is good, and lubricate your chain. And, and then just kind of watch what you're doing. Yes. So, yeah, wa- watch for bikes coming up. We like the hand signals that say, uh, bike up or mm-hmm. uh, what someone on the on the right or whatever happens to be so mm-hmm. but we like and we have a lot of audibles some people are very very good at yelling out uh, mm-hmm. bike up or bike back or whatever so mm-hmm. that's important and again if your bike group is big enough the person leading might say bike up or bikes you know like i'm slowing or whatever the person at the very end may not hear that so that's why it's nice that your group yeah is able to be audible. Yeah, and the hand signals are very important. Yes. Yeah, we, we like that. Yeah, yeah sure. I agree. Sure. And also when you're group riding, um, you know, if, if you're close enough to the person in front of you, you may not be able to see the road quality ahead of you like the leader can. So Exactly right. Then someone points, you know, there's a stick, there's a mm-hmm. pothole or a mm-hmm. big crack in the pavement or whatever. Yeah, sure. that's very good. Sure. And I'm assuming that you, uh, by this time, you guys know how to bike together. Like you know each other. We do. Uh, the, it's interesting uh, because the group has changed. Mm-hmm. When we first uh, started, it was uh, uh, we're just get out for maybe a, a 10, 15 mile ride at 10 or 15 miles an hour at max. Now the, the new group, the, we had so many people that have retired and moved away mm-hmm. or something's happened. But So the new group is very interested in riding. Oh, they, okay. they want to ride and uh, they want to ride uh, 20 miles or 25 miles they want to ride at 15 16 miles an hour mm-hmm. so it's it's a, it's a new complexion but it's a it's a great complexion sure but yeah the interesting thing is there's no common theme to how these people got together i mean uh, probably the last 10 or 15 members i'd never knew before oh, okay. they, they just came along but they're wonderful wonderful people mm-hmm. so. is there a, a- big process to become a member is it top secret <laughs> <laughs> there there is a process and uh, so we can eliminate people that we don't think fit sure and uh, we do that occasionally it doesn't happen often but it does but you have to have two sponsors that know you and will speak f- for mm-hmm. your personality and your abilities mm-hmm. then you have to ride with us at least twice to see if, if you like us and see if we like you sure. so uh, we, we try and eliminate the problem before it happens Mm -hmm. that's very very smart well when you're not with the corvair biking society or maybe you are um, do you have any great biking adventures that you've been on uh probably one of the most memorable one was we we got on a biking barge in holland and uh, the barge would move every day and we would uh, bike to the barge and there were about 25 of us and of course we, we had a 
a leader, of course, uh, from Holland. And, of course, he knew all the trails. He knew all mm -hmm. the historic sites. And uh, he was a hoot. He'd get on the table and, and dance for us. You know? it, was, it, was, it was fun. That's when you don't forget, you know. <laughs> so then how did that work? You would, your bike would be on the barge and it, you would move to a new spot or the barge would move? The barge would move. Okay. They, they provided wonderful bikes. And so we'd get off the barge every morning and ride all day long. And then, you know, like roughly... Four o'clock in the afternoon, we would ride to the barge, and he knew where it was going to be, and then we'd get back on board and go from there. Were there hotel rooms in on the barge? Yeah, we slept on. Oh, yeah, yeah. the rooms are so small you had to turn around to <laughs> go outside to change your mind. You know. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's an amazing trip. It was fun. Yeah, great, yeah. great fun. Yeah. Have you been to other places outside the country? Yes, I have. But uh, this. Cedar Rapids group doesn't do the European trips. Mm -hmm. The uh, Scottsdale group does one every year. Mm -hmm. They go somewhere. So, yeah. Um, any funny stories involving bicycles, like maybe getting lost or storms? Well, that that or... happens all the time. <laughs> 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 oh, not that I can think of. You know, it's, uh, I can just reiterate that, that the people are, are so wonderful. They're cordial. Yeah. They're, they're considerate. Uh, if someone has an issue, not one person stops, but five stops. Mm -hmm. you know, if you've got a flat tire or whatever happens. And so uh, the whole group is very attentive to one another. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have, uh, whether it's um, here in Cedar Rapids or in Scottsdale, do you have a favorite place to ride where you're always like, if I'm going to go somewhere, that's it? Well, sure. Of course you do. Uh, we love uh, riding north on the on the trail and going up to either Center Point or to Albernet. Mm. We like to go there for lunch mm -hmm. uh, or we like to go uh, south to Ely. Now, mm -hmm. today is kind of a neat ride. We go through the uh, Prairie Park Fishery oh, around yes. around there and then end up over at the uh, uh, Indian Creek Nature Center. It's not a long ride, but there's a few hills there, but it's a nice ride. So, uh, uh, and today we'll probably have, depends on how warm it is, but I suppose uh, 15 or 20 riders, mm -hmm. and then we could do go back to the chrome horse, and they make us do that again. <laughs> <laughs> they make you do that dr beer drinking? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and we're recording this in uh, mid-October, so here in Iowa, uh, the leaves are definitely falling this time of year, so they it's a, it's beautiful outside, um, a little bit colder than we're used to, but still throw on a jacket, and you're just fine on a bicycle. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Uh, how do you see bicycling continuing in your future? Well, uh, like my friend Bob just said, I'd like to bike as long as I can sure. because uh, I think it keeps you uh, physically and mentally fit. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I guess I think the, the the mental part is probably as important as the social part because it gives you something to look forward to. Mm -hmm. If you're not there, they say, wait, wh where were you? Right. And so uh, uh, then you, you create a lot of friendships and uh, a lot of support out there and if someone uh, gets sick or has some tragedy, the Corvairs are there for them. Mm -hmm. so. And any advice that you would give somebody who wants to get back into biking? Yeah, I, I would uh, buy the best bike that you think you can afford to to buy as light as uh, as you can. Mm -hmm. Believe me, you'll be buying new bikes every <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> yes. Just get started. Uh, if you can find a group to ride with, it's even better because... Mm -hmm. Then they'll they'll say, "Hey, let's go," and, and you say, "Well, I don't want to go." Yeah, no, we're going to go today. Yep. So, yep. And most local bike shops have some sort of ride, you know, whether it's a uh, people who are wanting to go fast or just social rides. Most bike shops have something, and then that can get you a starting point. Then maybe you meet people. Then, you know, maybe you'd be lucky enough to join something like the Corvair Biking Society. So. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you showed me before we started recording um, the progression of the clothing you guys wear to show off the name of your club the Corvair Biking Society unsafe at any right. speed I just right. love it and you're like almost every bike club or bike society where you know you start out at the t-shirt you upgrade to the dry fit and now you're full-on jerseys we are and they are you mentioned one of your jerseys um, is pretty popular one that we have it's multicolored it's, it's very bright very safe of course we're we're pretty much into safety but mm -hmm. Uh, this was designed for us through a, a number of uh, drawings that we finally selected this one. And some of our Corvairs wrote it on Ragbri a couple of years ago, and it was nominated to be the, the best jersey they'd seen. So, I believe it, yeah. yeah. So that made us feel pretty proud. Oh, yeah, yeah. Very nice. 
Well, should we give a shout out to your your posse at the Corvair Biking Society? I'm sure that hopefully they're listening. <laughs> oh, let's hope. Yes, <laughs> we have a closing ceremonies uh, at Co College Alumni House on Thursday night, and um, a number of people contribute to this. And we're, this is the first time we've ever had a theme. It's going to mm. be a back to the '50s theme. Uh oh. So um, we've got a '57 Chevy to get pictures taken in front of an old Schwinn bicycle, an old motorcycle, and we are encouraging people to dress in '50s, but. We have one gentleman who is the MC who's very good. He's, he's one of our bikers, of course. Another gentleman, his name is John Hancock, is an ex FBI agent, mm. but he's an authority on, on Buddy Holly, so oh, he's nice. is providing the music for that. And then we have um, uh, a couple of gals that are decorating the tables with all 50s memorabilia things. And we, then we have a, a slide presentation of uh, all the rides that we've taken the last few years. So. It's, it's really a fun deal. And awesome. We have 52 people signed up for that. Oh, so, my gosh. That should yeah. be fun. And you have a bunch of memorabilia here uh, while we're doing this podcast that I'm going to be sure to get some photographs so that people can go uh, on our social media site and check it out because it sure. it's pretty cool. You know, yeah. um, you've been around since 2002, right? Mm, yes. So mm -hmm. I'm assuming the group has progressed dramatically. It has. Yeah. No question about it. Yeah. yeah. One of the things we're looking at here is a... Is a a Corvair model. Yes. And uh, one of our uh, riders drove to Dyersville, Iowa, which is, what, 75 miles, I guess, to get it. Oh, my so, gosh. <laughs> so that, that's at every picnic, every event, and it, yeah. it's uh, part of our stick. And it's a beautiful car. I mean, yeah. too, too bad that it uh, wasn't... They're, they're extinct. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't good for the road. But right. at least your club will continue... Hopefully you don't go extinct at any time too. Well, that's soon. hope. That's yeah, right. yeah. Right. Well, Duffy, thank you so much for being on the podcast. I really enjoyed it, and uh, hopefully, people, uh, especially people in the Cedar Rapids area, and also if they're in the Scottsdale area, keep an eye out for the Corvair Biking Society jerseys. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. My pleasure. How about a touring tip? Let's talk training for a tour. Hopefully, you're getting close or have reached the point of acting on your wish to tour. If not, enough thinking. You can do it. So start planning and set a date. So training is both physical and mental. You know, physically, obviously, you've got to condition your body, especially your butt, to be able to pedal for hours at a time. And really, the only way to get your booty ready is to get lots of saddle time before you leave on that tour. Also, incorporate some simple meals to prepare your body and to prepare your soul. Learn to make one-pot meals and learn to really enjoy packaged food. On the bike, you'll be eating mostly unrefrigerated foods. And of course, there's tons of options, but most of the time you'll end up packing foods that can be squished in your bike bag and foods that are easy to eat on the move. Be sure to practice riding your bike with lots of weight in it so you can maneuver turns and stops with all that extra weight on it. I would recommend starting out riding in 10 mile segments, resting between segments. This will help you gain strength and confidence. And speaking of confidence, mental training is super important as well. You have to prepare yourself for a new daily routine, even if your tour is only a few days. Living off your bike is much different than home life. Also, preparing yourself for spare headspace and think time. Biking gives you time to think and reflect. So carry a small notebook and pen to jot down epic thoughts and life-changing ideas because they do and they will pop up on long rides. During your training rides, try putting your phone on airplane mode or maybe even turn it off if you are brave enough. Experience your ride without endless notifications. Instead, enjoy the environment and enjoy your ride. Uh, mentally prepare to wear the same clothes over and over. Find comfy, non-chafing clothes that work on the bike and stick to them. Uncomfortable clothes will end up unworn and take up precious space in your bike bags. Pack light and figure out your comfort level with cleanliness. Some people can wear the same clothes several days in a row. If you can't, like me, have enough clothes so you can wash the previous day's outfit and let it dry by hanging safely on your bags while you ride. Then it can be ready for the next day and you can repeat the process. Other ways to get mentally prepared would be to follow bicycle travelers on social media. There are tons of them out there. Watch their adventures and get yourself pumped up for yours. 
If you happen to run into bikers on tour, meet them, talk to them, hear their stories, and get inspired. Or find a book about touring and read up. Another fun idea is to put a map on your wall and stare at it every chance you get. Daydream about the amazing adventure ahead of you. Part of your training will be to embrace the suck. Yes, embrace the suck. Your tour may involve rain, mud, high temps, low temps, sore muscles, uncomfortable saddle, and maybe even some numbness in your feet or your hands. All of this is temporary, and once your tour is done and you're back home living in the luxury of flush toilets, clean sheets, and temperature-controlled rooms, you will look back at the sucky times and maybe make them the highlight of your storytelling with friends because you survived, and you can't wait to do it again. So get your next trip on the calendar and start training. That's this week's touring tip. Check out MurphologyPodcast.com to find all kinds of great info and email me at MurphologyPodcast at gmail.com. I'm thankful for your time today and appreciate you tuning in to listen to the Murphology Podcast. I leave you with this quote from the unwritten book of Murphology. This quote comes from John Bon Jovi. Believe in yourself. Believe in your dreams. If you don't, who will? Think about it.